everyone, I'm Nimrel and welcome to the Minometer Tips and Tutorial Series! Today we're going to focus on basic movement and posing your character to create PNGs that you can use in your image editor to make thumbnails, posters and awesome stuff. Mm, can I put my leg down now? I'm not going to show you how to set up a project, I'm pretty sure you can do that. Our first step starts once your project opens. Please head over to Project Properties, and click Project and head over to where it says Size. The standard default is 720p. I recommend changing this to whatever you want your final outcome to be. Uh, the standard would be 1080p, the full HD, 1920 by 1080 but you can change that to whatever you want. After that, head over to the workbench and import your first model. If you don't know how to do that, uh, let me know in the comments and I'll do a quick tutorial tip on how to do it. Right, you'll notice the view screen defaults to a diagonal view, which is great if you know what you're doing, but a lot harder for those of us that are new to the program. So here's how we move our view screen. Firstly, place your cursor in the view screen, otherwise you'll be moving things in all these other windows and we don't want to be doing that. So cursor in the view screen and hold left click. Now if you move your mouse, the screen will sw swing around a central point in front of it. Please note it's not pinned to the character, just to a central point in front of your screen. You can zoom in and zoom out using your mouse wheel. To swivel the view screen, hold right click and move your mouse. Now you'll move around the view screen's Y axis. Right, this is great, but so far I haven't been able to move my camera too much. So, to move the screen around the world like you would in Minecraft spectator mode, hold right click and use the W, A, S, D keys. Now, you fly around like you would in spectator mode in Minecraft. To go directly up, again hold right click and use E. And to go directly down, hold right click and use Q. Whoops, too far. <laughs> Right, once you have your view screen at an angle that you are comfortable working at, we can start the posing process. Using this little box at the bottom left, click on your model's name. I recommend changing the name using the model properties that pop up on the right. Otherwise, this sort of thing tends to happen. Okay, let me, let me just... There we go. I'll move up. Wait, what? That's not lag! No! No, 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 no! Why can't I find lag? Oh my gosh! No! Yeah, frustrating. Now that you have named your model, we can start moving it around. Can you see these little circles and arrows that show up at your model's feet? If not, use this little button at the top right of the screen to toggle them on and off. These circles and arrows are all linked to the frame data that are shown on the right when you select your model. Arrows are for position, circles are for rotation. All the yellow items connect to the X data, all the blue items connect to the Y data, and all the red items connect to the Z data. To use these circles and arrows for movement, left click on them and move your mouse. You can also hold left click on the number and move your mouse here in the frame data. I generally tend to use both the view screen and the frame data for movement depending on what I'm working on. For example, this here might get a little tricky because it's directly in front of us. Yeah, I can't quite get that arrow to highlight. In which case, using here is much easier. Okay, great Nims, I can now move my character, but um, this isn't much movement and these are going to make very boring thumbnails. And yes, I agree. To move specific parts of your model, you can either left click it on the view screen, or you can head back to our little grey box here on the left, and click on the model arrow to open up all the movable parts. And left click here. You'll notice when you click on certain parts of the body, you will get these little blue circles. The light blue circles indicate the bendy parts of the body. You can either bend them here or again in the frame dart box here on the side. 
It is important to note that once you have clicked on a specific part of the body, the rotation section is no longer pinned around the feet of the, of the model. Rather, it is connected to the connection point on the model. This means that things can get a little bit um, weird. When this happens, don't let frustration get to you. Rather, head over here to the data boxes, left click quickly, and type zero. This takes you back to zero and you can start again. The best tip I can give you for moving the model parts is practice. It gets easier, I promise. Okay, now for the posing part. A good tip here is to be careful of the fine line between making our square friends come to life and turning them into freaky wooden puppets. Let's make this model wave. Nims is right-handed, so we're going to use that arm. There we go, a pretty generic Minecraft wave. However, we want people to connect to our model, so we want to make it a little bit more lifelike. Let's think about how we stand when we wave, shall we? Let's perhaps move a leg or two. Give it a little bit of bend. Move the arm out a little bit. Perhaps even tilt the head. Whoops, too much! To quickly undo a motion, you can either use the arrows over here at the top left, or use Ctrl Z. Okay, once you're happy with your pose, we want to render it into a usable PNG image. First, because we have an imported a camera, Minimator recognizes the view screen as the camera. So let's position that into a position where we like the image. Okay, there, I like that. Now, head over to your project properties again and click background. We want to remove the clouds and the ground. Now, yes, I know we could have done this sooner, right at the beginning of the project. However, if you are only just starting and you are using more than one model, using the ground as a point of reference really helps. So I tend to do this near the end of my project. Now head over to the top left of your screen and click on the image button that looks like mountains. Boom. If we did our project properties correctly at the beginning, you don't need to change your image size. It should be exactly what you want. Just hit remove background and click save. Now when you open your image, it should look like this and you can import it into your image editor to create some awesome stuff. And that's that for today. Thanks everyone for watching. If you have any questions or would like to see tutorials on specific parts of Minimator, let me know in the comments. In the meantime, I'll see you in the next Minimator TNT where we'll be starting an actual animation. See ya!